Heat pumps are sold as cheap to run, but that promise comes with one massive asterisk, the price of electricity. When electricity is cheap and stable, everything looks fine. But when it isn't, the maths turns ugly very, very quickly. And that's an issue that I started to worry about long before most people did. Back in August 2021, after living with a heat pump for two years, I wrote a blog post that annoyed a lot of people in the heat pump world, where I drew the rather obvious connection between heat pump running costs and rising electricity tariffs. At the time, I'd also just launched Renewable Heating Hub and the forums, so my knowledge was still patchy, still forming, and still evolving. And when that article went live, my inbox exploded. Emails, direct messages, private notes from prominent people in heating and renewables. And the message was broadly the same. Stop scaremongering. You're being irresponsible. You're undermining heat pumps and the transition to renewable heating. Some were polite, some were noticeably less so. But here's the thing. I wasn't being anti-heat pump, and I definitely wasn't guessing. I was worried about two very specific things because I identified a trend that was forming from our own lived experience. The first was inefficient heat pump systems, the kind with scops below three. Because once you're down there, electricity price sensitivity can become brutal. For those of you familiar with our system, we're the poster child for an average and frankly avoidable heat pump design failure. A large house, fixed flow temperature at 45 degrees centigrade on commissioning, no heat loss calculation, zoning, on off stats, and a system scop of 2.7. During cold winter months, our heat pump pulled around 2,200 kilowatt hours of electricity per month. That's a lot. And when tariff prices climb, systems like ours don't just increase bills, they can murder bank balances. That's why I was signing the alarm and encouraging people to get the most efficient heat pump systems installed. Fast forward a few years, and UK heat pump monitoring in 2025 shows that poorly designed systems average scops between 2.2 and 2.8. Meanwhile, well-designed, well-commissioned systems are hitting 3.8 to 4.5, and the current UK average scop still around 2.8. My second worry was simpler and far more common, running heat pumps hotter than they need to be, high flow temperatures, lazy control strategies, poor commissioning. Again, these were all present in our own system. And none of these things cause a dramatic failure. They just nudge electricity use up bit by bit, day by day, bill by bill. Back in 2021, electricity prices were starting to creep up after a couple of years of stable, cheap pricing. In 2019, 15p per kilowatt hour was easy to find, and our own tariff was a ridiculous 11p, the good old days. By 2021, that was gone. And by the end of that year, people with heat pumps were starting to panic. All of a sudden, poorly installed heat pump systems were exposed because they were masked by cheap energy. Now fast forward to today. The off-gen price cap for January to March 2026 puts average electricity at around 27.7p per kilowatt hour on direct debit. Gas by comparison sits around 5.9p and there's no meaningful structural fix in sight. So what does that actually mean in real homes? Take a typical three-bedroom house needing roughly 11,500 kilowatt hours of heat per year. With a well-designed heat pump at a scope of 4, you'll use about 2,875 kilowatt hours of electricity. At 27.7p, that's around 800 pounds a year for heating. Drop that scope to 3 and your usage jumps to about 3,833 kilowatt hours. That's roughly 1,060 pounds. And at a scope of 2.7 like our system, you're looking at about 4,260 kilowatt hours. That's around 1,180 pounds. And the bigger your heat demand, the faster your bank balance bleeds when tariffs edge up on poor efficiency. These gaps aren't theoretical and they're widening with every price rise. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if electricity edges higher still because electricity pricing isn't just about markets. It's geopolitics, weather, wars, grid constraints, interconnectors, and a lingering dependency on gas that simply isn't going away. The world is volatile and it doesn't look like it's going to be calming down anytime soon. So if your heating system only works financially under perfect conditions, you're exposed. Which brings us to tariffs. Electricity price per kilowatt hour is the single biggest factor in heat pump running costs. Heat pumps don't burn gas, they don't burn oil, they use electricity. That's their fuel. To fight back, many homeowners turn to time of use tariffs, mostly from Octopus Energy, who have done more than anyone to make them mainstream. And yet remarkably, exclusive access to aggregated anonymous Havenwise data shows that nearly 40% of users are still on flat rate tariffs. The concept of time of use tariffs is simple. Cheap electricity overnight and during low demand, often 10 to 15p, expensive electricity at peak times, 30 to 40p or more. So you need to shift your usage and behavior to save money. In theory, that's perfect. In practice, heating demand usually peaks when it's cold and cold usually lines up with expensive electricity, so it's not an ideal match. So then batteries enter the conversation. Tesla Powerwall, Give Energy, and a growing list of cheaper alternatives. The strategy is straightforward. Charge the battery overnight when electricity is cheap, discharge it during the day when prices spike. On paper, that looks great. Savings of 20 to 40%. 
but the reality is a lot messier. You're staring at £5,000 to £12,500 or more as an upfront cost depending on how much battery storage your property needs. And over time, the batteries also degrade, typically across a 10-year lifespan. For a typical heat pump home where the heating portion alone often uses 3 to 4,000 kilowatt hours of electricity per year, on top of baseline household use of around 2,700 kilowatt hours, pairing a battery with a good time of use tariff might save 3 to 600 pounds annually if you can shift a substantial portion of usage, especially peak winter demand. Real-world examples from heat pump owners show that two to 400 pounds is more common when standby and parasitic losses, partial shifting, and imperfect alignment with cold weather peaks are factored in, which means payback can stretch 12 to 20 plus years unless you have solar, which boosts self-consumption and export earnings, or very high usage. And if your heat pump system is inefficient, you're just shifting and wasting more electricity. So I don't think that this is a mainstream solution and it works best for people with capital, space and a high tolerance for complexity. And as countless posts on the Renewable Heating Hub forums show, batteries help most when the underlying system is already solid. So we need to stop pretending that tariffs and batteries fix bad heat pump systems. They don't. They improve margins and they do not cure design flaws. Which brings us back to heat pumps. They are an incredible technology. Mature, reliable, proven but only when they're designed, installed, and commissioned properly. A bad system isn't just inefficient, it's dangerous to household finances, to trust, and to the entire transition to renewable heating. In fact, studies show that simple commissioning tweaks can cut electricity use by 10 to 20%, saving hundreds of pounds per year. So demand guarantees. Ask installers for the design scope in your house. Ask for expected January and February flow temperatures when your system will be under maximum stress, and ask how it will perform when it's minus two or minus three outside. And if they can't give you a clear answer or they're being vague, walk away. This approach isn't anti-heat pump, it's pro-homeowner. The real enemy here is complacency, assuming tariffs will save us and assuming prices will stabilize. They won't. A heat pump locks you into electricity for decades. This is why system efficiency matters more than any tariff trick. And we all need to remember that tariffs and their structures are not guaranteed. At the end of the day, they are simply products and energy companies are businesses. So if a tariff stops working for them, they will kill it. And we've already seen this happen. Over Energy abruptly shut down their Heat Pump Plus tariff with just over 30 days notice, no gradual phase out, no long runway, just gone. So if your heat pump only works financially because a special tariff exists, you're exposed. You need a system that can survive January and February at full load on a boring standard electricity tariff without destroying your finances. Because if time of use tariffs disappear or change and your system isn't efficient enough, you're in real trouble. And we know this firsthand because we've been there. So efficiency is your insurance. Monitor your tariff, track your consumption, watch your flow temperatures, and your bills will tell you the truth, whether you like it or not. And yes, policy changes could help. Rebalancing levies away from electricity could cut prices by 20 to 30% and finally make good systems cheaper than gas. But that's not going to happen anytime soon. So don't build your household finances on political hope. And I've said this a million times, heat pumps don't fail homeowners bad systems do. And tariffs don't ruin heat pumps, they expose their weaknesses. And if this video made you feel uncomfortable, that's probably a good thing, because that discomfort is your early warning system. It means you're paying attention and you need to turn that feeling into action. Start asking your installers, designers, and anyone quoting your heat pump the hard questions, the ones that matter when electricity hits 30p, 35p, or higher. And if you already have a heat pump and those bills are stinging, dig into your system. Challenge what you've been told, and figure out how you can improve your efficiencies and get your bills down. So leave a comment with your thoughts, share your tariff, share your running costs, and share your experience, good or bad. Also like the video if it helped, and subscribe if you want more honest, unfiltered conversations about heat pumps and renewables. And if you're stuck, confused, or just want answers from other homeowners, come and join us on the Renewable Heating Hub forums. Because the future of heating isn't just about technology, it's about understanding what you're paying for and why. Thanks for watching, see you in the next video, bye-bye.